Hello viewers, this is John. In this lesson, you will learn 5 important moves that will help you improve your game. The key move here means that the move is vital and cannot be delayed. It also allows you to accurately assess your position and secure a good position in the game. The moves can accurately be calculated using the square diagram. So now let's look at the first key move. Let's say black plays from 8 to 12 or 7 to 12. How do you calculate the move? With this position, white can move his piece if white has a piece at 41. White can move to 36. If white has a piece at 43 or 44, 44 can move to 39 or 43 can move to 39. If white has a piece at 35, 35 can move to 30. So if we use the square diagram, we see that the vertex at 34 is surrounded by 29, 30, 40, and 39. So we move to 39. In this particular instance, we take 39 or we can also take 30. The same thing applies here. So if you draw the square to the other side of the board, we also have 36 here. So 36 can also be played. What if the position changes? Let's say if black plays from 10 to 14 or 9 to 14, then we can take square 38. So we can play 43, 38 or 42, 38. We can also play 31, 27. If you have a piece at 31, 31 can move to 27. If you have a piece at 32, 32 can also move to 27. If you draw the square, we see the vertex at 32 is surrounded by 27, 28, 38, 37. So we can take 27 or 32. All right, so let's take the second key position. With the second key position, if your opponent plays from 9 to 30 or occupies square 13, what we need to do is to move our piece to 39. So if you have a piece at 44, 44 will move to 39. If you have a piece at 42, 42 can move to 38. In the same way, if you have a piece at 41, 41 can move to 37. Let's say the position changes. Let's say black plays 12, 18 or 13, 18. So the same way, if you have a piece at 47, 47 will move to 42. If you have a piece at 49, 49 will move to 43. And then if you have a piece at 50, 50 will move to 44. You can move it to 44 or you move it to 45. And then also, if you have a piece at 46, 46 can move to 41. If you draw the square diagram, We see the vertex at 36 has 41 and then 31 surrounding it. And that of 38, we have 42, 43, 33, 32 surrounding it. And then finally 40, we have 34, 35, 43, 44 surrounding it. In a game, we can take these positions. You can also take 31, you can also take 32, you can take 33, you can take 34. Or 35 so these are the key position with respect to the second key position we are studying that's how it works let's look at the third one move I'm going to show you how to apply them in the game now with the third one let's say your opponent plays 12 17 or 11 17 so in that case if you have a piece at 41 41 can move to 36 if you have a piece at 42 42 can move to 38. If you have a piece at 45, 45 can move to 40. So if you have a piece at 34, 34 can move to 29. Now let me explain this particular position. If you draw the square diagram, we see that the vertex are 37 and 39 are surrounded by 33, 34, 44, 43. And out of 37, we have 42, 32, 
3141. If your opponent plays from 11 to 17 or 12 to 17, the key moves here are 3141. So you need a piece that can have control over these two squares over here. So if you play 36, you have control over these squares here. If you have a piece at 36, 36 will have control over these two squares. Let's say you move a piece from 43 to 38. If you have a piece here, this piece controls all these four squares over here. And as I said, these squares are vital squares. If you move to 38, 38 has control over these four squares here. If you have a piece at 45, 45 can also move to 40. Mm -hmm. So you can also have a piece here to have control over 34 and then 41. These are important moves. We also have the vectors at 19. We have 13, 14, 24, 23 surrounding it. And then the vectors are 39. We also have these four squares surrounding it. And then we see that the square at 29, 29 is also surrounded by these key squares. So we have 23, 24, 34, and then 33 surrounding square 29. So we can also move to square 29 to take control of these four squares here. That is how the position works. We move our piece to 29 to have control over all these. The vectors are 17. It's also surrounded by 11, 12, 22, and 21. Again, we have a square 27 in the middle. So that will take charge of these four squares, the 21, 22, 32, 31. So we can also play 27 to have control over the four squares here. So this particular position, that's how it works. So we need to understand it when you are playing the draft. You need to understand the moves that you make. Now, let's look at the fourth one. Let's say your opponent plays 8 to 12 or 7 to 12. If you have a piece at 46, 46 can move to 41. If you have a piece at 43 or 49, it can also move to 43. Then you have a piece at 50, 50 can move to 45. So let's explain that with the square diagram. So if you draw the square diagram, we see that the position at 34 and then the position at 32 are surrounded by 27, 28, 38, 37. And that of 34, we have 29, 30, 40, and then 39. Again, we see that we have squares here. We have 38, 39. We need a piece at 43 to have control over 38 and 39. If we move our piece to 43, 43 will have control over 38 and then 39. So that's why we need to move the piece here. And then the same thing applies. So if you draw the square, these squares are key squares here. We can play 41 to have control over it. And then we can also play 45. 45 will also have control over the 40 we have here. This is how this particular move works. So you need to understand the move and then you make them. Let's see your opponent play from 5 to 10. When you draw the square, We see that these two positions, we need a piece at 39 to have control over these two squares here. If you have a piece at 43, 43 can move to 39. So the same way, if we extend the square to the other side of the board, so we see that these two key squares, we need a piece at 37 to have control Alright, so we can play the 41 to 37. So we can move it here. And then you have control over 37. And then here too, if you have a piece at 44, 44 can move to 39. If you have a piece at 42, 42 can also move to 37. Or you have a piece at 41, 41 will move to 37. So this is how the fourth one works. Now, let's look at the fifth one. With the fifth one, your opponent plays from 7 to 12 or 8 to 12. If you draw the square diagram, we see that the position at 12 is surrounded by 27, 28, 38, 37. And that of 
34, we have 29, 30, 40, 39. So we can take control of the 32. So 32 have control over these four squares. And then if you play 34, 34 also control the four key squares here. If you have a piece at 40, 40 can move to 34. If you have a piece at 37, 37 can move to 32. Or you have a piece at 38, 38 can move to 32. So this is how this one also works. These are some of the key moves you need to know. Let's say your opponent plays 3 to 8. So 3 to 8 is played or 2 to 8 is played. Now with this one, if you draw the square, So this time, let's have the double square and then I'll use it to explain it vividly for you to understand it. So we see that the position here or the vertex here is surrounded by these key positions. And that of 48 is also surrounded by 42, 43. So we can play 38. If black plays 3 to 8, we can also play 43 to 38 or 44 to 38. The same thing happens here. So the vertex at 30 here is also surrounded by 24, 25, 35, 34. And that of 50, we have 44 and then 45. We see that the 40 here can also be taken because 40 is surrounded by these key positions here. So we can also take 40. The same thing applies to 36. So these are some of the key moves uh, I would like to uh, teach you so that you know them and apply them in your games. You'll see that your games will improve tremendously. In my next lesson, I'm going to show you how these moves are applied in the game so that you have a very good game. Thank you very much for watching my videos. See you in my next lesson.